start, the idea is talking about what we have been doing since, since Refinor. Basically, we have been working in transforming slums into successful neighborhoods in Latin America. To give you an idea of the, the scale of the, this problem, we have, and these are uh, data from um, 2018, so this is before COVID, we have 16% of the population of Mexico, 44% of Nicaragua, 16% um, of Brazil, 48% of Bolivia, 33% uh, of Peru and 14% of Argentina living in slums and unsanitary crowded uh, places. And one of the things we, we found uh, in, in, in dealing with this problem is uh, what happens with this picture. Um, this is a picture I took in Pila, Cyprus, in a convention uh, where they were talking about uh, improving cities. Um, I would like you to suggest or write in the, or, or comment, what do you see in this picture that is wrong? You can talk or write, either way. Okay, I see that, oh, sorry. If you look at the, the picture in Pila, I was walking, it was a sunny day, and I noticed the, the um, square, and there was this brand new solar panel. Uh, Cyprus has one of the most expensive uh, power um, cost of the uh, European Union. So that was very wise to put the solar panel. What, called my attention was the position of the solar panel related to the palm. And then I noticed that um, the, the light was in the way of the sidewalk. So I asked some questions and I discovered that there was a department of parks that put the palm, a department of clean energy that uh, set the, the solar panels, the department of lights that set the lights in the square, and the Department of Sidewalks that, as you see, try to make their way through all these other obstacles. So the conventional approach to deal with problems in cities is that each department tends to create its own solution. And those solutions not necessarily refer to um, the way that people living in the streets, living in the city uh, need. So what we thought was, in order to deal with slums, we, we, we have to move away from the idea that slums are a housing problem, or that they are only a poverty problem, or they are only a problem that has connection with some of the many things that slums lack. Uh, to look at the entire situation from the standpoint of people living in slums. And then we move from that conventional approach to the idea of city doctors. The idea is uh, cities, like people, get sick. And when cities get sick, crime rises, housing becomes more expensive, and um, progressively people start getting sick of the city and leave. And this makes city sicker. The solution is never one uh, part of the problem, and that's why we use this concept of city doctors, like having a family doctor taking care of the city and particularly about the people who lives in the city. So when we look at the slum, we have security issues, we have community development issues, we have employment issues, we have education and training. And the idea is to put all these things together in order to make a sustainable transition from a slum into a regular neighborhood or a city. This is one example of what we did in Colón, Panama. These are the results that we measure. We measure the value of uh, investment, the cost of investment, but also the impact in terms of tourism, in terms of getting um, redu reduction of crime, reduction of poverty, reduction of uh, 
all the problems they, that came from precisely the lack of uh, infrastructure, the lack of jobs. And what we did in Cologne, Cologne was the center of Cologne, we went there with Roger, was controlled by gangs. Uh, the center of Cologne, Cologne is the city at the entry of the Panama Canal in the Atlantic Gate. So, you know, we all know better Panama City, which is in the Pacific. But Cologne center, the historical center, uh, fell into disrepair and basically was controlled by uh, gangs and there was violence and um, a situation that was really out of control. So we went there. I, I walked um, into the houses of the gang members and talked with their uh, families. And the wives uh, of these people told me that they basically wanted their husbands to um, work in something different than drug dealing. Because of course they were going to make much less money, but they wanted to live longer than 24 years. And that was the idea. We progressively started transforming the city, working with jobs programs, housing programs. We connected the two things. For example, we created a satellite uh, community in order for the former gang members to um, get housing while they were working in transforming the city. So they, get, they got construction jobs. And after that, they got jobs as tourist guys. So today, so if you go to Colombia. Can, can, yes. can you wrap it up? Because I'm yes. sure there's going to be sure. plenty of questions and we want to get to a few other authors. Absolutely. Well, same thing we did in uh, Sonora, Mexico, with a series of cities. And again, we met, our metrics was looking at jobs, looking at uh, social impact of each one of the projects. And in Northern Argentina, as I said before, where we also noticed the difference when the company stopped doing social work. And they, um, you, you can see the metrics in um, market share. So we noticed and we demonstrated that there was a direct relationship between market share and the company doing well and the society and community uh, being uh, developed. And also in um, um, the city of Buenos Aires, we use apps uh, in order to make people feel safe and hire people living in slums that are usually associated with uh, this kind of um, stigma. So this is basically, I'm trying to, a short uh, story about what we did and what is presented in more detail in the chapter. Mm -hmm.